Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon, not here with Geeky Sparkles in this video, but I am going to talk about DC Comics and AI art and accusations that DC Comics is using AI art in its comic books. Uh, this was bound to happen. A lot of these companies looking to save money, a lot of artists experimenting with AI or you know, at least being open to the uh, the possibility of using it if it increases their workflow, gets them more gigs, whatever. Uh, a lot of readers and, of course, other artists vehemently against AI art. We're going to talk about it because I think what is going to happen is people are going to have to kind of prove you know, that they're not using AI art to be part of the cool kids club. Um, if the art looks too good, it might be AI, I guess. I, I, I guess the, uh, the trick is to draw worse. If you draw worse, then uh, people will, will not believe that AI uh, did it, I guess. Um, but yeah, I think we're going to have to have this discussion because, uh, you know, the reality is, is a lot of these companies, they're just looking at the bottom line. They don't care where the art came from. A lot of consumers, I don't know if they care. Uh, where the art came from, you know, how it was produced. And that's shitty, I know, for a lot of artists to hear that. But, you know, the average consumer goes to the store and they pick up a comic book and it's got a cool cover. It's got the Joker on it or a Harley Quinn on it or Batman, whatever. They're just looking at like, wow, that's a really cool piece of art. Same people that buy prints that are obviously copies at conventions. They don't care if it's the original artist or not. They don't care if this person's just scraping art off of the internet and a lot of these these print sales people do. They just know that's a really cool picture of of Harley Quinn and I'm going to pay 15 or 20 bucks for it. And this is kind of the same with comics now too, I think. Um, you know, again, we're, we've got multiple tiers of, of uh, consumers. So let's, uh, let's talk about this. I'm a little late to the party, but apparently there's been some movement on it, according to Rich Johnston over at Bleeding Cool. Uh, everybody's kind of accusing everybody else of using AI, and I think you're going to have to start proving it now that you're not using AI. So maybe draw streams will come back. I actually joked that uh, I used to do draw streams, but I thought they were boring as hell because uh, like you want to watch somebody draw something for how many hours? I mean, it takes forever to draw stuff, and it's boring. It really is boring, and I don't want to talk to people when I'm drawing because I can't focus on drawing. But anyway, let's talk about this. Before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news views and rants. Guys, uh, no woohoos. This is a very serious situation in comics. So yeah, apparently this happened a couple of weeks ago, and I vaguely remember hearing about it. That uh, James Leach, writer and designer James Leach, was questioning whether DC Comics was using AI-generated art. And uh, that was about two weeks ago, and now things are ramping up, according to Rich Johnston at Bleeding Cool. Um, lots of people are against the use of AIs, uh, AI art in comics, according to Rich Johnston. There are lawsuits against the main AI art generating companies as a result. That is also true. However, more and more companies seem open to it, especially you get like Wizards of the Coast, which produces or historically has produced massive amounts of full color painted art for Magic and Dungeons and Dragons. They've been busted on several occasions now using AI art. And they're just like, whoopsie doopsie, we won't get caught next time. We won't use it for the final product. And then they just got rid of a whole bunch of people that are like, what the hell? What the hell? Consumers don't care where the art comes from. We're just going to fire up the art machines and go for it. So yeah, according to Rich, a couple of weeks ago, writer and designer James Leach accused Andrea Sorrento of using AI in recent issues of Batman. At the same time, uh, Andrea Sorrento posted on Instagram a video showing a little, a little art process in one of the contested panels. Leach initially wrote, first off, there are the usual telltale signs, strange anatomy, errors, a uh, human is unlikely to make, um, kind of gives me like, uh, Simon Bisley vibes here, but, uh, the weird hands Joker being insanely ripped in one panel and wasting away in another, his wandering nipples. Is that a nipple down here or is that a bullet hole? Maybe it's a nip. I don't know. The shift in style becomes more suspicious when you know that there seems to be additions 
in a much more basic brush. Look at the repetition and shape on the large black stroke in the first image. Okay, well, they really tore this apart. Um, they really tore this apart. The image in particular feels like a prompt that's been modified to look Joker-ish. Why the washboard abs, the ripped jeans, and the sneakers? Harley screams Joker, smart move, hiding the hands, though. <laughs> Another thing that stands as how low res the painted panels are compared to the rest of the art. So are they talking that some of the panels are um, paintings and some of them are AI? Um, so this is uh, Andrea Sorrento's response. So you can actually see the process. I think this is what is probably going to have to happen. Unfortunately, I mean, that just adds extra time as an artist. Like, do I really want to screen cap myself painting, drawing everything? Yeah. So apparently this is, this is her, her, him, her, uh, doing this illustration. So, I mean, AI is not going to show you the process. AI is going to just give you the completed work. In response to these tweets gaining prominence on social media, James also looked at another panel. Here's a good example. Seemingly carefully painted art being modified in pretty rudimentary fashion, presumably because it didn't fit the intended purpose. Sharp outlines around the cut and paste hair in comparison to the brush strokes around at the repeated elements. Um, Twitter posted, or I'm sorry, Twitter poster who I cannot pronounce that name, I'm sorry, uh, also posted their own experiments with AI software and got very similar results, to, very similar results to the published panels. As soon as I saw those panels, it reeked of AI. So I did a test and this is what Bing generated. It looks way too similar to his results to just be a coincidence. I mean, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, one of these is an actual Batman panel made by an alleged renowned artist. The other is made by AI after I wrote a description. Well, actually, if anything, that should show you how freakishly good AI is getting that it's very hard to tell. I mean, that that's what that's what that tells me is like it's it's very hard to tell if the art is AI or hand drawn or digitally painted or whatever. And that is a cause for concern. You know, I think for artists, because it's like, well, wait a second. If the end result is, is damn near identical, then what is stopping these companies from replacing us? And that's a good question. Uh, Leach added, as this reached a wide audience, I didn't voice this kind of suspicion lightly. I know it's a big deal. Well, yeah, you're accusing somebody else of, of faking it. You know, I know people have been wrongly accused before that has actually happened. That's why I spent time researching after someone raised the possibility and poured over all three issues separately. Some of these points could be dismissed. It's the fact that all different telltale signs stack up together with modifications that suggest the artist did not create the base artwork with multiple artists also facing AI allegations recently. It's clear comics companies need to have a checking process in place if they want to make a stand for actual artists. That's a big if. Again, I think that um, AI being integrated into comic book production is a given. I think that it's going to mean more to uh, some readers, some collectors, and definitely more artists. And so far, most of the people that have the uh, aversion to AI are artists because it is their livelihoods on the line. Yeah, you know, it really is. I mean, again, if you, if you can crank out multiple full color Batman graphic novels per month, you know, in the same amount of time and the same budget it would take to do one, the company being the company and looking to make profit is, is absolutely positively going to do that. They're going to do that. Uh, they're going to be like, well, geez, we can have 10 Batman comics or we can have one Batman comic and the consumers aren't really going to care. The average consumer isn't going to care. Yes. There are going to be people that are going to pour over every panel and be like, is this, you know, live or is it Memorex? Um, but normies probably won't care. They'll just look at it and be like, ah, it's a pretty cool Batman cover. That's a pretty cool, that's some pretty cool art. I'm going to pick this up. And that's the unfortunate truth. You know, I'm not justifying it. 
I want to be very clear. I'm just saying the thought process is we can get more bang for the buck. We can get more bucks with AI. That's that's what all these companies, we can get more articles. We can get more artwork. And does it devalue individual artists and writers? Absolutely, it does. It absolutely does. Are they going to fight for you? Probably not. They're going to fight for the bottom line. They're going to fight for their shareholders. That's what they're going to fight for. So it's kind of like, I don't know. I don't know. I, I really don't know what the future of this, this, this is going to look like. The world is changing. It's only going to get harder to tell. That's true. A uh, spokesperson told DC Comics and Indie 100, which is uh, this publication right here, Harry Fletcher did an article on it, that uh, they have longstanding policies in place that all artwork must be the artist's original art. We're looking into the specifics of the situation. DC Comics have told me nothing else since. This is on isolated concern. Um, there's a Tumblr user asking about uh, recent uh, Power Girl covers for DC Comics. And apparently the artist, yeah, they said, look, it looks fine. If you look, you can see inconsistencies, yada, yada, yada. But apparently this artist broke it down too and show their sketches. So, you know what I'm saying? It's going to get really, really hard to tell. And I think we're going to see kind of a digital witch hunt go on. I think that we're going to see artists basically pouring over other artists' work to see if there's any digital tomfoolery going on. And th this kind of used to be the case when people started using... Uh, digital tablets and Photoshop. I remember that wasn't real art either, you know, and you had to show that you were actually drawing stuff that you weren't, you know, cheating or tracing or whatever. And now we moved into uh, AI, but you can see, yeah, these are real sketches. Uh, so this artist did not use AI, but people are going to assume it is AI if there's anything weird about it, even if the artist made a mistake or didn't draw something right or it looks too good. Um, Jordan Jabroni posted his own observations that, uh, DC comics and Dorling Kindersley are using AI art on the cover of their new book, DC cinematic universe, a celebration of DC at the movies, probably, but these are actually, uh, like representations of production stills from different DC movies. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's pretty fakey. Well, they're using AI detectors and this is, this is interesting because, AI detectors are not 100% accurate, and I think Rich actually does bring this up in the article because this technology is moving so fast. You know, uh, different AI detectors work differently. And, um, you know, this one, AI probability 0.5, AI probability 42, but we saw the original sketches. Basically, nobody knows what right now. Yeah, and I, I agree. I agree that uh, nobody really knows who's using it. I mean, some of it's obvious, but again, my takeaway from this is just how, just how good AI has gotten in such a short period of time that it is hard to tell. There should be no question, you know, and it could be even, it could be even that uh, artists are, you know, pulling uh, AI assets or elements into their art. The entire piece isn't generated via AI. And I think at that point, it's fair to say, well, this is a, you know, piece of digital art and how it was actually put together, you know, might be a combination of like, hey, the, the foreground characters, and I've seen some artwork, like this is a good example. You're going to see hybrid art. This is um, traditional art, the characters with AI art in the background. And I think we're going to see more of this kind of thing where a lot of the tedious stuff like backgrounds and cityscapes and you know look even in manga they do um cheat <laughs> i guess for lack of a better term i mean if you've ever looked at manga and it's obvious that they they you know kind of xeroxed cityscapes some older marvel comics i know but tom mcfarlane's done it before too um but they would actually do zip a tone you know uh photographs and and so it is a way to cut some corners and like, if it doesn't really do anything for the store, like, okay, cool. I can spend, you know, three days drawing these beautiful cityscapes, or I can just 
input the cityscapes into the computer and and just you know maybe have a 3D model or something that speeds the process up because the reader is not going to care. At the end of the day, the reader probably won't care. Um, other artists will because they'll be like, well, you completely fudged this. And I think that that's where most of the criticism, I'm going to be honest, I think most of the criticism is coming from uh, other artists because it is kind of like, hey, you cheated. You know, this isn't fair. I'm, I'm doing everything by hand. And uh, is it fair? No, it's not fair, but I think it, it is what it is. And we're going to see more of this. And I think within the next two or three years, uh, it might be very common to see Marvel and DC Comics generated in part or completely with AI artwork. And I've said before, my own my own usage, I would consider it if I could basically train the AI to draw in my style and draw the way that I would draw things, but preferably better, you know? And then like, I, I just use that and then somehow you're able to to lock that to yourself, right? Like an NFT or something that like, this is my trained AI that draws like this. Nobody else can use this specific style or whatever it is. Um, but I don't think that's realistic. I, I mean, and technically, technically nobody can like own a style anyway. So it's going to be really, it's going to get really, really interesting going forward guys. But I'm going to wrap this one up. Uh, there it is. DC Comics now also accused of using AI art. Uh, Wizards of the Coast accused of using AI art. And um, this isn't going to end anytime soon. In fact, I think as the comic book industry contracts, we're going to see a lot more accusations like this from artists who are not on board with AI because the, you know, literally their livelihoods are disappearing, getting snapped. You know, I think we're going to have fewer artists making more books probably with the help of AI. That's what the future is going to look like. You don't have to like it. I'm just saying that's what's probably going to happen. I'm going to wrap it up. Please subscribe. We'll talk later.